In this video I'm going to show you how to build your own variable lab bench power supply. It can give more than 100 watts. And it has overpower protection. Only when you decrease the output power it switches on. These are all the components we need. I bought them on AliExpress. I used a metallic case so I had to ground it. You can use a plastic one without necessity for grounding. It's about 22.5 cm in length and 14.5 cm in width. Next I decided the position of external components like so. I took the dimensions of the switch and the multimeter. Using a screwdriver I signed the place to cut. So with the Dremel I cut the case. You can do that holding first the corners with a nail and then using scissors cut the case. Then I rasped the edges. Then I made a small hole for easier drilling using a screw and a hammer. The same for the second one. As a socket I used a banana socket. It's very convenient because you can insert also normal wires in these holes. So I measured the distance between two leads and bored the holes. They have to be about 1 cm in diameter. Then I inserted the switch, the multimeter and the potentiometers. Before inserting the banana socket, pay much attention to isolate very well the leads from the case. I used some layers of heat shrink tube like this. I inserted the socket and used also hot glue. After I made a continuity test with my multimeter. Next, I took the dimensions of the power socket and made some marks. Then I cut the case and inserted the socket to sign the points to drill. After drilling I fixed in place the socket with screws and nuts. The screws were too long so I cut them. Then I tried to figure out how to place the internal components. Sign the places to bore for grounding, also for AC to DC converter and step down converter. Then I drilled again. To increase the cooling of the converters I had to increase the airflow and so I made some holes in the case. I used two types of drill bits. This is the final result. Now I had to do this circuit which is in the description. And this circuit for the potentiometers of the step down converter if your potentiometers are 5 or 7 k ohms. And this circuit if the potentiometers are 10 k ohms. Then I grounded the case. To do that I used some paper and prepared the place to connect the wire in this way. It's a good idea before soldering a wire to a lead to put some solder on the lead and on the wire. I 
I recommend you to use heat shrink tube and isolate very well the leads of the power socket and the switch because it's very dangerous. Using a screw key and screwdriver I fix the ground wire with a screw to the case in this way. Next I prepared the other leads of the power socket for soldering. Then solder the wire to the first lead and cut it long enough to solder it to the first lead of the switch. And I isolated the lead. I remember to check if the case is grounded so I made a continuity test relative to ground lead. Then I prepared the wire for soldering to the first lead of the switch. and soldered it. After doing this, of course, I isolated the lead. I soldered another two wires to the opposite lead of the power socket. One of these goes into the terminal of AC to DC converter and another one to the third lead of the switch. The second lead of the switch has to be connected to the second quick clamping terminal of the adapter. Like this. Before inserting the step-down converter into the case, I had to desolder the potentiometers by hitting the leads and pushing the potentiometers out like this. Then I soldered three small wires to the constant current holes and two to the constant voltage holes. Next, I connected the plugs of the multimeter to it. I took the small red wire of the multimeter and soldered it with a wire and connected it to the positive output of the AC to DC adapter and the other side of the wire to the step-down converter. I connected the negative output of the AC to DC with the negative input of the step-down converter. Then I took clean the wire from insulation, like this, and connected it here. With the help of a screwdriver I made a circle, soldered it a little and connected it with the yellow wire of the multimeter. The other side of the black wire was connected to the positive output of the step-down converter. The large red wire of the multimeter has been soldered to the negative lead of the banana socket and the large black one to the negative of the output of the step-down converter. Then I soldered the wires to the precision multi-circle potentiometers, like this. In my case the voltage decreased if I turned the knob of the constant voltage in clockwise direction. So I soldered the third lead to the first instead of the second. I put it in parallel with the output a 10k ohm resistor to increase the discharge of the capacitors of the step down converter. The power supply is complete. Now I can power my electronics projects with voltages I need. Like I said before, the power supply can deliver huge power and work at his maximum for a long time. So for example, if you want to charge large batteries, you will need a cooling system, which is in the next video. Thank you and see you in the next episode.